Have you ever just heard the way a language sounds and felt that you needed to learn more about it? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and this is the question that I will be addressing today. Interesting sounds that make me want to learn the language. That's it. I'm pretty easy to convince that uh, a language deserves at least some amount of time worth of study and often I fall in love with a language simply by hearing a song in that language and listening to how the vowels and the consonants line up together and how the language sounds all together. I'd like to share with you five sounds from five different languages or similar related languages that when I heard them I wanted to learn them just because I heard the sound in a song. And if you're anything like me you may have encountered these sounds or these languages as well and maybe these languages are on your to study list as well simply because they sound nice to your ears. The first sound that I would like to uh, talk about. I heard it in the Kurdish uh, language, particularly I believe it's in the Kurmanji um, version or uh, dialect. Uh, it might be in others as well, I'm not sure, but it's I think it's quite characteristic of Kurmanji and I think it also exists in uh, another language uh, that will be featured on this list as well. That is the sound. In Kurmanji, as far as I'm aware, I was watching a, a teacher go through the alphabet, the Kurmanji alphabet. It's not necessarily one letter, it's actually a combination of H and W together. Um, but they pronounce, I guess you could call it one um, uh, consonant or one uh, sound, maybe not necessarily one letter, because they use the um, Latin alphabet or a modified version of the Latin alphabet to write this sound. In Kurmanji, you might hear it in words such as huesh, which means good, or you might also hear it in huin, which is uh, the Kurmanji word for blood. And so I'm going to read uh, some lines from a Kurmanji song. Uh, I'm not going to sing it because I'm terrible. Uh, the song is called Gundino. Hawar, uh, it's I'm obviously gonna pronounce it wrong, but just let me try. Uh, wa gundino, wa malino, gundino hawar. Daika mino be huedino, gundino hawar. Um, talking a lot about loss and things like that. Maybe I Google translated the lyrics. A lot of uh, Kurdish songs that I've heard are very beautiful, and they have a great sound, a great melody. Um, but when you look at them, I think the meaning is quite sad a lot of the time. Uh, so yes, uh, the Kurmanji dialect especially has a lot of this hua sound. It's a really amazing uh, sounding language and definitely on the list of languages that I would love to spend more time with eventually. The next sound that I would like to talk about is a sound from the Mongolian language, which is their version of the letter L. Uh, it's a little tricky. And very unique it's a sound I think it's not necessarily unique to Mongolian but again it's definitely very iconic of that language I would highly recommend going to listen to some uh, Mongolian spoken it's very like whispery and there's a lot of that sound some words that utilize the Mongolian L are the word for cake, which is uh, candle, which is tla, to blow out a candle, tla So there's a lot of L's there, uh, and it seems like a sound that they can just pull off effortlessly, which is, um, I guess, part of the theme for all these strange sounds that to us who never use them are strange, but they're quite natural and uh, just part of daily life for people who speak these unique languages. The next uh, sort of interesting sound that I would like to speak about is the only vowel, I guess you could say, on this list. Uh, and uh, that we go to uh, Latvia. The Latvian language has, um, firstly, a very interesting way to, they've divided the alphabet. Um, they have a lot of 
letter pairs, you know, so they have a long vowel sound and a corresponding short vowel sound. They often have a hard and soft corresponding consonant sounds. I think, ooh, I think they have like soft and hard ends, soft and hard other uh, letters that I, if I, I'm not going to say them now because I can't actually remember. But so they have a very neat way that they've divided the language. So uh, what's interesting to me is how they pronounce their uh, letter O, which is sort of like a, there's a few pronunciations, but one of the more unique ones is O, I think. So it's more like a diphthong or a combination of two vowels, O, uh, then one. And so Latvian itself has um, some very uh, interesting um, vowel sounds uh, and which really sound nice in song. Some Latvian bands that I like to listen to are Tautu Metas as well as Auli, and they used to play together as well. They play like sort of um, folky, folk pop. Latvian music. One particular song by Auli is called Ozolini, uh, which I believe is referring to the cultural oak tree. Um, it's a very nice song, I love it. And uh, it's sort of written like a poem. One of the lines goes like this Ozolini, Ozolini, li guo, li guo, tavulilo, resnuminu, li guo, li guo. So when I heard the song, and every uh, end of the line ended with this li guo, li guo. I had to kind of, I was like, what is that sound that everybody keeps repeating? And the song itself is even sung in different dialects of Latvian. So you hear this sound pronounced in different ways. And I believe it was hard to find a translation for that exact word without knowing Latvian. Uh, it's like sway, since it's about a tree. They, you know, it sways, li guo, li guo. Uh, and that's how they uh, wrote the song. So it's just a language that sounds really nice to my ears and the way the vowels, they, they, they're different to what I would expect in English. So very unique. Um, unfortunately, I just don't feel like I have the ability to learn Latvian right now. It's not a culture or a country or a language that I'm at all exposed to in my daily life. Um, and I don't even know if I will travel there in the future. So it remains to me one of those slightly unique languages, despite being a national language, um, that I may not ever get around to learn, which is unfortunate. But I have all the lovely music by them uh, to listen to. The fourth sound is something I just did myself. I don't actually think that this sound is very unique, but that might be due to the languages that I have already studied. And that's the soft sound, the soft th sound, which you can hear in English in such words as fourth. We have a th, most of the time I think it makes a the sound, but in words like think and in fourth, um, it becomes a soft sound. And after having trying to teach somebody um, English, they struggle. They're like, well, how do I know which one it is? And unfortunately, we don't really have a marker for uh, if it's got to be a soft or a hard th sound. However, there are other languages which have specifically marked out these sounds. And I believe, I could be wrong, that most of them have both the th soft sound and the th hard sound. I am talking about, from my own experience, Arabic. They have the th letter as well as the th letter. Uh, letter. Um, however, uh, it also features in Icelandic. I believe they have a th and a th sound, and I also believe that Greek has a th and a th sound. So whenever I hear this, it just makes me want to go, you know what, I gotta learn that language. And I don't know why, because I've already encountered it, but I seem to like it a lot. Uh, from my research, or from my Wikipedia searches rather, I have discovered that it's actually not a very common sound in um, a lot of languages uh, worldwide. Um, and interestingly enough, these three languages I mentioned, Arabic, Icelandic, and G Greek, are quite old, I guess, or they have very old literary um, histories.
yeah so maybe there's something to be said for this being a more archaic or a classical sound that as time went on uh, speakers maybe we stopped using it and stopped preferring it uh, and stopped defining the differences between th and the lastly because i have already uh, subjugated uh, you guys to listening to me butcher these sounds um, enough i decided i would do go all the way and do some crazy ones and subjugate you to listening to me mispronounce them as well so i am sorry about that one of my favorite sounds comes out of the um caucasus region especially the north caucasus but we'll get into that um and that is the sound it's from in particular it can be found in the avar or avar language which I believe is a Northeast Caucasian language uh, and it's spoken in the areas of Dagestan uh, as well as Chechnya. So with a lot of the languages from the Northeast and Northwest and even the Southern Georgian uh, languages, they're very like well known for having a lot of consonants and a lot of unique consonants. So the <laughs> sound is um, one such unique consonant um, and I love just listening to any of these languages because um, they just sound so unique to hear. Avar, I think there's actually three k sounds. There's a k, a k and a k at least. There's probably more. Why? Because what one of the elements that makes these languages so unique is um, this kind of consonant whose name I can't remember right now it is the consonant plus a little bit of air that comes out of your mouth so in these languages you find a lot of sounds which I know I'm pronouncing terribly um, but you have the sound plus the of air that comes out there's not so much uh, information on the Avar uh, language, from what I can understand. There's a lot of information, or I mean comparatively, with regards to the Georgian language, which is part of its own um, family of uh, Caucasian languages. And obviously that's because it's um, spoken and taught at a national level. So there's at least some more resources there. Uh, the Georgian language itself is very beautiful. It has a very beautiful uh, writing script and it's very unique. Similarly, because of all these consonant clusters and very interesting sounds. Um, and uh, if you would like to hear more of the Georgian language, look up Trio Mandili, but you don't need me to tell you that because they're way more popular than I am. There are three girls who sing in the Georgian language and for a language with a lot of and consonants all around the shop um, they make it sound very lovely lastly on the other side the northwest caucasian family i believe um, you find a lot of the circassian languages which go by various names like other the abkhaz abaz they are similar in the sense that they have very complex consonant sounds um, they also seem to have a lot of whistling sounds like a in there as well and a lot of this same thing that I mentioned at the beginning a lot of consonants mixed with a w, ch, w, g, w, j, w, k, w, k, w, and of course our favorite the palatal l sound I love it it just makes me go crazy there is not as much resources for as Georgian um, but I know that since there's a large circassian diaspora uh, there are some more efforts being made to preserve those languages but again it I think it is generally considered a bit difficult to find resources uh, for that language so any of these uh, Caucasian languages would be um, they would provide an amazing uh, learning experience for somebody who had the time and patience to learn them and maybe one day I will as well if I have the time uh, because they're just so unique in, I guess, their grammar as well as their uh, pronunciation and, of course, their history. So that's it for me. I'm done mispronouncing sounds, at least for now. Um, but I know that you guys are all language learners and language enthusiasts as well. 
So why not tell me some sounds in languages that made you fall in love with those languages? Maybe you're studying them now, or maybe you're like me, and you are just um, waiting, dying for that moment to come along where you have the opportunity to learn those languages simply because you like the way they sound. Have you heard about the sounds that I discovered today? And did I miss out on any unique, iconic, and favorite sounds of yours from different languages? Let me know in the comments or in a response video, and I will see you again sometime. Thanks. Bye for now.